Hey, welcome back to The Dive. Today on the show, we have the founder and CEO of Swarmio Media, Vijay Karthagesu. He's going to discuss Saudi Fun planning a $38 billion investment into the gaming and esport ecosystem, how gaming has evolved from computers and gaming consoles to mobile phones, and he's also going to give us an update on Swarmio. But before we bring him on, do me one quick favor and just go ahead and smash that subscribe button, please. Hey, VJ, welcome back to The Dive. Hi, Cassandra. Uh, nice to be here again. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. It'll be good to get the update. Okay, so let's start off with the big news. In September, Saudi Fun unveiled plans to invest $38 billion into the gaming and esport ecosystem. What are your thoughts? This is a huge uplift for the entire gaming and video gaming industry. Uh, if you look at it, uh, what Saudi is doing, uh, they understand the future of entertainment is video gaming. This is where the, the millennials and the kids and the next generation, this is where they are consuming content from. So what they are going after, it's not just, if you look at it, it's not just video gaming, it's about the future of entertainment. They want to become the capital of the future entertainment. So that is why they are focusing on, and this we are kind of seeing it in, in the Middle East and Asia and most of the regions, uh, telecom operators and governments are pushing a lot uh, to capture this new, the entertainment, uh, which is video gaming. Um, if you look at uh, when people watch, uh, some of the video game tournaments, like League of Legends, for example, uh, they are in hundreds of millions of people actually watch. And these are the kids. These are the next generation. They don't watch TV. They don't watch, uh, they don't listen to radio. They don't read newspaper. So if you are a brand and you need to actually reach to these audience, the only way you can reach them through video gaming channels. And this is where Twitch is big. This is where YouTube is big. This is where Facebook gaming is going after. So Saudi investment is into video gaming is to capture that, uh, that future of entertainment. That's why Swamio, we are focusing on MENA as a big region. Middle East and North Africa, it is the fastest growing video gaming region in the world. So that's why we are going to be focusing a lot in that region. So from your view, how has the gaming industry adapted and evolved from gaming consoles and computers to mobile phones? It's a simple answer to you, because if you look at the entire revenue, 50% of the entire gaming revenue is from mobile. And mobile is going crazy. And uh, this is also, if you look at the region, so PC and uh, console, they need some sort of fiber type internet connection, you know, better internet connection. Um, and so it was North America and Europe. Uh, we had a huge adoption of PC and, and, and console gaming. But when it comes to Asia, Africa, MENA, LATAM, where the, the mobile penetration is lot, and this is where the new gamers, this, this is where 2 billion gamers live. There are 3 billion gamers in the world, but 2 billion of them are in Asia, Middle East, Africa, and LATAM, and they're all mobile users. And so 50% of the entire gaming revenue is actually comes from mobile now. So mobile actually took over everything, and it is the future. Okay, so let's talk a bit more about Swarmio. You released the key performance indicators and other key metrics based on data collected over the past six months. Can you walk us through the numbers? Sure, sure. So we, we have, as everyone know, that we announced very large telecom operators, especially Globe in Philippines and Orido in North Africa. And with these, over the last six months, we are growing in a tremendous way. So we are growing 38% uh, growth every month. So that is good. And we are keep, we are actually seeing that graph actually going like a, uh, it's an exponential growth. So we are expecting the growth to be even more than what we already have. And the, the, the interesting metrics for us is consistently, the people visiting to our website or landing page and signing up for an account is between 18 to 20%, which is really good compared to industry standard. And we are seeing this uh, consistently everywhere. That's huge. And from that, from the people who actually registered for an account, more than 4% of those people are spending money 
in 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 the uh, in the uh, in the account, whether they are subscribing, buying items, or doing something in the platform. So they are spending money. And one of the very surprising facts for us. We were expecting a smaller amount of spend, especially when you go to North Africa or Asia. Uh, we didn't expect a huge monthly spend. But to our surprise, one of our implementation actually has more than $50 US per month. So average gamer, when they're spent in the platform, they're spending more than $50. It is huge. Um, I'm not sure whether it is going to be at $50 when we get you know huge user base, but for us, but that, that actually beat our expectation that gamers are spending lots of money on gaming. And this is the next generation. And it also tells you that gamers have the, the gaming community when they are, they are not just kids without money or people without work. So one thing that we are kind of noticing, these are millennials and digital natives or millennials. They are already in the workforce. They're earning money and gaming is their new social media. So they are spending money. So they have money to spend and instead of going, spending it in other entertainment values, they're actually spending it in the gaming industry. So this is a huge trend change that where people are actually spending. Uh, because if you look at it, gaming is, Still, the cheapest entertainment per hour. So if you look at, uh, you're going to a movies, when you go to movies, you're spending on popcorns and theater and, and uh, juices and pops and, and the tickets, per hour you are spending a lot. And if you're going to, especially if you're going to go with your friends, that's a loss of money. And Netflix is, that's what Netflix is trying to reach, but still it's expensive. So gaming is still the, cheapest per hour entertainment. So that's why we are actually seeing that again and again, we are seeing people are spending lots of money on gaming because it is the future of entertainment. It is the social media. This is where the next generation, as a, as a community, they come together and have fun. Now you announced a distribution agreement with Westbridge Telecom, a wholesale provider of telecommunication products and services to telecos in the US, Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. Could you walk us through the agreement? Sure. Uh, so one of our model, uh, our go-to market model to get telecom operators, as you know, we provide our solution as a turnkey solution to telecom operators. So in, so in the telco world, there's these organizations in the middle, they call wholesale providers. What they do is they sell between the telcos, they, whether they sell data or minutes, so every telecom operator, so if you look at even Canada, like uh, now TELUS, for example, TELUS will have a TELUS wholesale division, or they will call it TELUS International, where they sell services to other telecom operators in the world. So similar to that, in the international, every telecom operator there, whether Telecom Malaysia, we announced a partnership with Telecom Malaysia Global, which is an international organization, they sell between the telcos, same thing with Westbridge and Appleby. So what they do, they do business between the telcos and buy and sell things. And what that means is they already have business relationship with lots of telcos in these regions. So that means that uh, you know, in a telecom world, in order to really get into a contract, you have to go through a procurement process where, where there's, there's check and balances, there's a process, there's master service agreement. These are, usually this takes from one year to three years, even sometime more. But these organizations in the middle, they already have these contracts, already established relationship with all the, all the telcos and they have the sales force Salesforce, like number of people in different countries selling to them. So what we are doing, we are partnering with them, like Westbridge and Appleby, Telecom Malaysia Global, where they, they are now selling our solution to their existing uh, telco. So for example, Glow is a deal that we did to Telecom Malaysia Global. But our deal is our time to get that contract signed is so small because Telecom Malaysia already have that relationship. They can just go and add this as a line item to the existing contract. So it speed up the, the contract time and the sales time. So this is why uh, we signed the partnership with uh, Westbridge and uh, Appleby. So Appleby is going to be focusing on more on the, on the LATAM region and Westbridge is going to be focusing on, on MENA region and Telecom Malaysia Global, they are focusing 
in Asia and Africa region. So our idea, the model is partnering with these organizations who already have a relationship with the telcos and we partner with them and, and shorten the sales cycle. What can you tell us about your partnership with Unipin? Unipin is so in this whole value chain and very simply, I want to kind of repeat it again. In the gaming industry, it is a $200 billion industry, but more than 70% of that money is made by selling in-game items, whether diamonds or skins for the games or anything within the game. So most of the publishers, they, they give the game, they develop the games and give the games, mostly, especially mobile games are free. So you download the game and play. But the way they make money, they make 70% of the $200 billion is by selling these small items to these gamers. These are all microtransactions. So people like Unipin or companies like Unipin, they already established this partnership with the publishers and have a wholesale agreement with the publishers to distribute these items to the gamers through their stores or any other stores. So our partnership with them enables us to bring in this inventory. So as many as gaming items we want for all the games in the world, we can provide those inventories to our gamers so they can actually buy. So basically in this, in this value chain, publishers, wholesale distributors, us and the gamer, now we are in the middle enabling publishers to, to monetize this gamer base. Uh, one uh, idea, one important point here, as you know, we are targeting Asia, Middle East, Africa, and Latin, where 2 billion gamers live, but they don't, the credit card penetration is very low. So they cannot buy these items today because they don't have the credit card. What they use is whether it's e-wallet system. If it is Philippines, for example, they would use Gcash. So most of the Philippine uh, uh, gamers use Gcash. So if it is Africa, there's some other one, M-Peso, for example. So, or they use the DCB, where the, they, they go to this telco, uh, they take the telco phone and up, uh, add the money to the phone and use phone as the wallet. So that's called DCB, direct carrier billing. So these are the two main items they can actually use to buy. So Unipin providing inventory to us, and we provide the our platform and the store and partnership with the telco interconnected, interconnected with their payment solutions and the evil Act system. Now we are fixing the value chain to enable users to, to be able to buy these items and publishers to be able to monetize these gamers who don't have the credit card penetration. So this is why we are actually creating this, this value chain, simplifying the value chain and enabling both sides, the gamers and publishers to be able to do the business. As you mentioned earlier, you recently collaborated with Globe Telecom and Tencent Games in launching two gaming tournaments. What's the latest on what's happening in the Philippines? Uh, so it's not just in the Philippines, but our model is partnering with telecom operators to bring all the gamers and, and partner with publishers and enable them to make or uh, monetize the user base. Part of this model, uh, publishers also, we work with the publishers to bring in uh, unique IPs or so unique uh, uh, gaming uh, solutions uh, for the gamer base. For example, in Philippines, we our partnership with Tencent. Uh, there's a famous game called PUBG Mobile. It's one of the key. Tencent is the largest uh, publisher in the world. Uh, they, they own most of the companies, including a majority ownership in, uh, uh, in Riot. So Tencent is the largest game publisher in the world. And so part of the Tencent is, for us is amazing because, uh, because they represent a huge percentage of the, of the, uh, of the gaming revenue. So we partner with Tencent. Um, especially for the PUBG uh, mobile game. And we are creating unique IPs, I means that unique league, uh, unique gaming, uh, gaming solutions. And also we run some of their uh, professional uh, tournaments in Philippines. So this is just an example of one partnership. Uh, we, we are working with many other publishers to bring, do the same thing. 
So we partner with them, bring unique IPs, unique solution to the gamer, uh, gamer uh, population, gamer community to engage them and give them access to these amazing games and, and solutions and, and also then enabling the publisher to monetize the user base. So it's a win-win for both of them and we are facilitating it. And in the future, we will be bring, uh, we will be working with many publishers, and that's something that uh, that we will be announcing uh, as we go. It sounds like most of your partnerships are done internationally. Do you have any plans on doing partnerships in the U.S. or Canada? Uh, yes, we do as a, as a long term plan to uh, for North America and Western Europe. But currently, our focus is Asia. Africa, Middle East, and Latin, because the market is huge. It is for us to grab, and there's a need, and we can we can address this uh, uh, this this geographies. So we are going to be focusing immediately and initially with uh, in uh, in Asia, Africa, Middle East, uh, Middle East. We will and Latin, and we will come back to. Uh, North America and, and Western Europe. Uh, we do have our plan, part of our roadmap. Uh, there's a huge plan that we have, uh, but not immediately. Okay, so Vijay, before we let you go, what are the key metrics investors should be watching out for as we head into 2023? So we have announced our conversion ratios and now they can kind of figure out, okay, things are working out. So what they have to look for Publisher partnership and telco partnership. So what we will be announcing, we are working with many telecom operators around the world and many publishers. So as we bring in more telcos, that means that we are, we are, we are getting access to more telco user base. And as we, uh, par as we partner with more partners in the, in the gaming industry, that means that we are bringing in more games, more solutions and more inventory and, and, and getting into the whole gaming value chain. Uh, in a in a meaningful way, so investors should watch out for uh, uh, look for announcements on publisher partnerships and telco partnerships. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much for coming on today and giving us the update, BJ. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for tuning in today. We'll be back again tomorrow with the latest in small cap news coverage. But in the meantime, feel free to check out another one of our videos.